Here's just another picture of this uh, 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 reaction sort of shown uh, from left to right. At the beginning, there's single-stranded DNA, which is coded by the recombination protein, uh, Rec A. Um, and there's double-stranded DNA here, which, which is going to be all engaged inside this uh, Rec A filament, where you have both single-stranded and double-stranded DNA. It's still pretty mysterious what goes on exactly inside this filament, but, but coming out the other end of this filament now is a new double-stranded DNA, which involves the red strand, which was originally single-stranded. And now you see the displacement of one of the two strands of the original duplex. So this is the strand exchange process uh, that we talked about. Um, and in the case of, of the cartoons that I've shown you before, that would mean that you would have a region of, uh, where there was strand invasion and the displaced or D-loop, uh, the displaced uh, D DNA will be uh, exposed as, as in this same uh, complex. Okay. Very recently, uh, there has been a, a kind of a, 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 a real uh, increase in our understanding of, of, of the way in which the Rec A and Rad51 proteins work. Uh, from the work of Nikola Pavlotich's lab, um, uh, where they have been able to study this uh, process in more detail at the X-ray crystallographic level. To do this, um, Pavlotich's lab very cleverly took six uh, Rec A molecules, but they made a, a synthetic gene in which all six molecules were part of a single open reading frame, so that, and they were linked together by putting short uh, protein linkers in between each of the six uh, molecules. So now what one has is a very small piece of the Rec A filament, but it's a uniform piece which is therefore able to be analyzed uh, more uh, efficiently in, by X-ray crystallography. And when they did this kind of analysis, it became clear that the, that the single strand of DNA is basically um, at the axis of this uh, filament. It's being held by all of these molecules. Each uh, Rec A monomer binds to three base pairs, and as a whole, this uh, Rec A uh, 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 protein machine now has unwound or stretched this single strand of DNA in the way that I talked about before. Um, so we begin to see how this is really being held inside the, the, the Rec A filament from this picture. And, in, and then uh, Pavlotich has also taken pictures of what's happening during this process of strand exchange. So the darkest strand here, the one that's here, is the single strand of DNA, which, is, um, which, is, which I showed you before. And over here is double-stranded DNA, the double-stranded DNA helix. And just beginning is that this strand is beginning to be incorporated into uh, this double-stranded structure. So we're seeing, if you will, an intermediate of this strand exchange in this process. And then as time goes on, uh, one completes the process of this strand exchange, leaving behind uh, one of the strands of the original uh, DNA molecule, double-stranded DNA molecule, now as the displaced strand. So we're beginning to see this process uh, crystallographically, it's still very difficult to understand in terms of the real dynamics of this process how this machine really works. How does it line up uh, a double-stranded DNA with a single-stranded DNA? If they just come together, the probability that they're going to be lined up is exceptionally small. So there has to be sliding or, and lots and lots of comparisons. There has to, at every step, essentially, there has to be a question of, is this the right pair of base pairs that can be made, or should we move over one or move over two? And all of those dynamic questions still remain to be uh, understood.